All right, so where I left off, I made a combined layer, and then I made a duplicate of the combined layer. Now, on top of that, to fix this area, this is like I've bolted the car together, but if you've ever seen a car that's been worked on, sometimes the hood is one color and the doors are a different color, and not everything's unified yet, right? So we've kind of sanded it, we've, we've put it all together, we've cleaned up the edges, but now we need to make it all, all fit and have a paint job. So what I'm going to do is make a new blank layer on top. I'm going to call that layer clone stamp, all in capitals, because this is a new tool being used in a new way. But it's very, very helpful for compositing. Then I'm going to right click next to where the eyeball is and go to the color options. And we almost never do this in Photo P. And click on red so that it shows up as a red layer. Okay. Then what we're going to do is use this tool, and we're only going to use this tool on that layer. This is to prevent you from erasing pixels that you don't want to erase. So this tool is called the clone stamp. And when you click on it, you'll get setting options just like we've always had. Just like we've normally done, we're going to use it pretty big and 0% hardness. At an, at an opacity of 100% to start. It's kind of like the opposite of our eraser. And I'm going to make it pressure sensitive with my tablet, but this is the setting that matters most. Instead of the source of our clone stamping being the current layer, we're going to make the source all layers. And we're going to turn off our background, otherwise we're going to start clone stamping gray. Okay, now this is what the clone stamp does. Let me zoom in on my portion here. I want to even out these textures. And I can't do it by erasing away because there's a bat's head right there that I don't want to have visible. So right now they're 100% opaque. So what I do is I use the clone stamp. And if I click somewhere, it's going to tell me I have to first hold Alt. And another word for that button is Option and click on the image to select a source. So I'm going to hold down my Alt Option button, my Option button, and it looks like little crosshairs. Then I'm going to click. And then, by clicking, while I'm holding down Option, whoa, that was weird. <laughs> I did a shortcut I did not mean to do. Let me get off of that. It's the Rotate tool. Okay, which actually rotate your pixels. Okay, anyway. Oh my gosh, what's going on? I got to get off the rotate tool. Yeah, the only... Why does it keep going? The only time I'll ever show you the rotate tool is when we're doing digital inking, and we're not there yet. I wish I could say stop doing it. Okay, I'm off the tool, but it still thinks I'm on the tool. Yeah, maybe. All right, here. Good Lord. All right, so when photo, photo P is crazy like this, I just save. <laughs> and then I close it. Make sure it saves. Because this is these are tool functions, and this is interface problems. This isn't having to do with the program. And then close it, close Photo P completely, open it again. You can even restart the browser if it's being really weird, because it has to do with the cache memory. And then I'll bring in that PSD again. All right, so now I've got my clone stamp layer. I'm on the clone stamp tool. I want to zoom in on the area. I'm using a brush that is large and 0% hardness. I'm doing it from all layers, pressure sensitive for size when I'm using a tablet. I can use the space bar to move around while I'm zoomed in. And I'm going to hold down Option and click, and that targets an area to copy from. And then I'm going to copy that texture wherever I want it. 
So I'm painting with pixels from my image. Okay, what does that look like? This is what the clone stamp did. It's not painting, it's just copying pixels from another layer. And because they're on their own layer, then I can erase away from them or merge them in any way I like. So I can now take, take my eraser at a low opacity with a soft edge. Big 0% hardness. Whenever you restart, oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Whenever you restart uh, Photo P, you have to adjust your settings again. But then I can slowly take away from it as well and help transition. I can also use Clone Stamp at a lower opacity than 100%. So let's try it at like a 40% opacity. Grab this. So I'm targeting by holding down Option and clicking, and then I'm painting that texture up here to help transition it. What if I want some of these scales, but I want them down here? I can do that. All in my clone stamp layer. So it's not hurting my original at all. My original is still there, it's just masking on top of it. So it's pretty helpful. And it's the way you can do things that don't exist in nature, like blend fur into scales. <laughs> Now it's easy to overdo it. And so we have some other techniques we can play with now. And the main technique there that we're going to use now is called uh, dodge and burn, right? And we've been introduced to this. But before I do that, I also need to fix that there's this weird eye hanging out. And I don't want that eye there, right? So how can I fix it? Well, I can clone stamp at 100% with a soft brush. And I can take from one area, like let's say here, with option. And then I can kind of fill that gap. And with that pressure sensitivity, I can really kind of make it whatever I need it to be. And clean up around it when I need to. Let's see, what else do I want to do? Maybe a little bit of this up here. Take down the opacity a little bit. Remember, I'm using pressure sensitive. That really matters. Otherwise, I'd be really messing with my edges. Okay, and then let's see. I want a little bit of the shadow here to be on the neck here. So I can do that. A little bit of this shadow texture here. And if I do it too much, I can always erase away, reveal what's underneath. Now, Clone Stamp takes quite a bit of processing, so it's good to crop before you do this. Now, I have a lot of not make the program do a lot more work than it wants to do. I can soften it. Yeah. All right, now that I've got the eye taken care of, now I'm going to do the same kind of merging. I'm going to take my clone stamp along with my combined layer copy, select them both, then go to Layer, hold down Option. Should have worked. Let's see. 
hold down Option, and click on Merge Layers. And I get a new non-red layer that's called Clone Stamp. And on this one, I'm going to dodge and burn. So first, I'm going to dodge. This is adding light, right? I'm going to do it at less than 20, pressure sensitive, mid-tone range, big brush, 0% hardness. So this is how I can even out lighting. So if I want light hitting the back, like it's hitting the top of the head, it's hitting the, the back of the body, it's hitting the top of the wings, This is a way I can dodge and burn all on one. And get it more on the top of the leg there and on the feet. And remember, dodge and burn also, it gives you lights and darks, but you can also play with the saturation. So let's now do the burning. Same thing, less than 20. We're going to be doing this a lot in our first proving ground. Big brush, 0% hardness. Where would I have shadows? Maybe under the wing. Maybe on the belly. Underside of the legs. I'm still trying to get pretty just even lighting overall. If I have a little bit of an edge that I don't like, that I should have trimmed <laughs> on that frog, I should have used feather and trimmed that a little bit better, I can burn the highlights. And that will help take that edge down. You see how that, that little halo gets burned right down to the middle gray. So these are strong tools, even at settings of less than 20. So burning highlights is safe. And dodging shadows is safe. But dodging highlights is not safe. <laughs> and burning shadows Sorry, burning shadows is not safe, and dodging highlights is not safe, because then you just get to black and white. All right, so you can see how dodge and burn, if I turn that off, you'll see what I had before. It can really help to unify everything. And I always do it on a duplicated layer, because I always tend to overdo it. And unlike Clone Stamp, you're never going to accidentally soften something because it's just going to change the lighting adjustments on the layer where the pixels already are. You're not never moving pixels or even adding pixels. You're just shifting their adjustments. Then I might brighten up the eye. All right. So now if it's pretty clean and seeing it on the gray background, there's kind of one last thing I can do. I can take that combined layer it's at 100% opacity, and I can use my magic wand with contiguous turned on to select the empty space around it. Then I just want to hold down shift and add any of these undercuts. And I just have a one pixel feather here, but you see these little debris that were left that I didn't erase out? It will show them to me. 
I don't need to get between every spine. But what I want to do 